Now, let us move to the death of the leg. This is the death of the leg. This is the superficial group of muscles of the calf. These muscles are the best of knees, plantaris, and soleus. The deep group of muscles consists of the popliteus, tibialis posterior, flexor digitorum longus, and flexor hallucis longus. This is the gastrocnemius muscle. It has two heads of origin, a medial head and a lateral head. They arise from the back of the lower part of the shaft of the femur, just above the two condyles. They form the lower boundary of the popliteal fossa. The two bellies join each other at about the middle of the back of the leg. The groove between the two heads lodges the small saphenous vein and the visceral nerve. The two bellies fuse with the back of the soleus to form together one mass which is inserted by a common insertion called the tendocalcaneus. This is the tendocalcaneus, inserted into the back of the calcaneus. This is the shoulder nerve, running in company with the short saphenous vein between the two heads of the gastrocnemius. They run downwards along the lateral side of the tendocalcaneus to the lateral side of the ankle joint and continue on the lateral side of the foot. This is the soleus muscle. It lies deep to the gastrocnemius. It arises from the back of the tibia and from the back of the fibula. It also arises from the fibrous arch which crosses over the tibial nerve and posterior tibial vessels. This is the fibrous arch. The soleus muscle is inserted with the gastrocnemius by the tendocalcaneus. Immediately above the origin of the soleus, the popliteus muscle lies. This is the popliteus muscle. It is inserted into the back of the upper part of the tibia. The popliteal vessels and the tibial nerve run downwards over it and at its lower border. The popliteal artery ends by dividing into the anterior and posterior tibial arteries. This is the posterior tibial artery and this is the anterior tibial artery. The posterior tibial artery runs downwards in the posterior compartment of the leg between the superficial of muscles. The anterior tibial artery runs forwards through the interosseous membrane to reach the anterior compartment of the leg. The plantaris muscle is absent in this body. When present, it has a small belly situated just medial to the lateral head of the gastrocnemius. It ends in, in a thin long tendon, very similar to the palmaris longus in the forearm. Its tendon runs downwards between the gastrocnemius and soleus to be inserted with them into the back of the calcaneum. The muscles of the leg. These are four muscles which lie deeply in the back of the leg. The popliteus, 
Flexor digitorum longus. Flexor hallucis longus. And the tibialis posterior. This is the popliteus muscle. It is the highest muscle of the group and lies edge to edge with the soleus. This is the flexor digitorum longus, descending over the back of the tibia. It arises from the back of the tibia. This is the flexor hallucis longus, descending over the back of the fibula and arising from it. Its fleshy fibers continue to the lower end of the leg and its tendon is not easily seen in the leg. This is the tibialis posterior muscle. It is deeply placed and it is over overlapped by the flexor digitorum longus and the flexor hallucis longus on either side. The tibial nerve and the vessels run vertically over its surface between the flexor digitorum longus medially and the flexor hallucis longus laterally. It arises from both the tibia and the fibula as well as from the interosseous membrane. Note that the flexor digitorum longus is medial to the tibialis posterior, but at the lower end of the tibia, the tendon of the tibialis posterior comes medial to that of the flexor digitorum longus. This is the tendon of tibialis posterior muscle. It is the most medial structure on the back of the medial malleolus. This is the tendon of flexor digitorum longus muscle, crossing over the tendon of the tibialis posterior muscle. This is the tibial nerve at its origin from the sciatic nerve at the upper angle of the popliteal fossa. It is better to the popliteal artery, but it descends downwards and medially to come directly posterior to the artery in the middle of the popliteal fossa. In the leg, it continues its course with the posterior tibial artery till it reaches deep to the flexor retinaculum, where it is again lateral to the artery, and divides into two divisions, called medial and lateral plantar nerves. This is the posterior tibial artery. It arises at the lower border of the popliteus muscle as one of the main, two main divisions of the popliteal artery. It descends deep to the soleus between it and the deep groove of muscles in the back of the leg, especially the tibialis posterior. The posterior tibial artery gives off a big branch called the peroneal artery about two inches below its origin. This peroneal artery runs obliquely downwards and laterally towards the fibula and it appears deep to the flexor hallucis longus between it and the fibula. At the lower end of the leg the peroneal artery communicates with the posterior tibial through the communicating artery. It ends by giving a perforating artery which descends in front of the lateral malleus. At the lower end of the leg, 
the tibial nerve and the posterior tibial artery run deep to the flexor retinaculum of the ankle. This is the flexor retinaculum of the ankle. It overlies the following structures which pass deep to it. For medial to lateral, they are the tibialis posterior muscle, which is the most medial. Flexor digitorum longus. Posterior tibial vessels. Tibial nerve. Then the flexor halus is longus which is the most lateral. Deep to the flexor retinaculum, the tibial nerve divides into medial and lateral plantar divisions, and also the posterior tibial artery divides into medial and lateral plantar divisions. These plantar nerves and vessels pass to the sole of the foot deep to the abductor hallucis muscle, which lies on the medial side of the sole. This is the abductor hallucis muscle, bridging over the plantar nerves and vessels as they enter the sole of the foot. Notice that the flexor digitorum longus muscle lies medial to the tibialis posterior, while in the leg, but crosses over it near the ankle to come on its lateral side deep to the flexor retinaculum. This is the tendon of the flexor hallucis longus lying on the under surface of the sustentaculum pili. This is the tendon of the tibialis posterior muscle, passing to its insertion into the tuberosity of the navicular bone. This tendon is also inserted into the rest of all the tarsal bones except the talus. Close to its insertion into the navicular bone, the tendon of the tibialis posterior supports the spring ligament from below. This is the spring ligament, which supports in its turn the head of the talus, thus preventing the flattening of the medial longitudinal arch of the foot.